in my line of work, it's a sort of curious backwater uh, scoring for films because I just want to give you a sort of a tiny bit of a background. Unlike other disciplines in the arts, my field is one where, you know, you say, right, you're going to write music for a film. But it's a medium that is so proprietary, it's almost, it almost works against the creative process. Unlike painting, for instance, or um, even writing music um, where you're not writing for film, you're writing songs, but almost any other art form, you create or can create a whole series of paintings, uh, using that analogy for a moment, where it is each painting might be a small progression, but it's all part of your consciousness, it's part of how you look at the world, and it is a... Um, uh, there's no feeling of proprietary when you, uh, for instance, get a commission to make a painting, uh, paint a painting for, a, for somebody, a Monet, for instance. You, look, you go to an art gallery and there are many Monets on, on display. Some of them have been commissioned, some of them are from private collections. Unlike that world, the film world is very proprietary. When I do a film score, I am basically nothing more than a fancy pencil for hire. I don't own any of the music when I'm done. It belongs to the film company. And likewise, when I'm done, even if I come up with something astounding that I may want to revisit as though I was a painter and I say, oh God, I'm going to do another one right away. In the world of film composition, you can't do that because you don't own the creation. And therefore, each time out has to be a completely um, clean canvas, as it were. And if I come up with an interesting idea on film A and want to explore that, it's very hard to do that and bring it into film B without somebody saying, hey, that belongs to us, you can't do that. So my world is very, very closed down creatively compared to other disciplines, dance, painting, almost anything else I can think of, writing. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 James Horner scores. For this list, we're focusing on the most brilliant scores of feature films, composed by this composer and conductor. Number 10, Glory. Based on the Union Army's first African-American unit of the Civil War, this film was lent a heavy dose of emotion thanks to the poignant score of a young Los Angeles composer. Political freedom and musical ecstasy. These two forces met in Mel Gibson's acclaimed historical drama as William Wallace fought for Scotland's independence. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Yet 
another score performed by the London Symphony Orchestra. Horner's creative chemistry with Gibson shines through the extravagant notes, and given the monumental nature of the film, the composer produced a heroic soundtrack for one of the decade's most respected films. Once again, a collection of nominations was bestowed upon Horner, although Braveheart was just another example of a man doing what he loved most. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Titanic. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> Believe it or not, the iconic theme song for James Cameron's 1997 film was never supposed to be. After being instructed that vocals should not be included on the soundtrack, James Horner secretly wrote My Heart Will Go On with Will Jennings and approached his friend Celine Dion about lending her voice. Titanic further established James Horner's reputation as one of Hollywood's most brilliant composers, and his legacy will continue to reach beyond the realm of cinema. What's your favorite James Horner movie score? For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I feel young.